Life is suffering. Right. Indisputable. What do you do about that? You, you voluntarily accept it and then strive to overcome the suffering that's a consequence of that. And you do that for you and you do that in a way that makes it better for other people. And then that works. And one question might be, well, how well does it work? And the answer is, you'll, the only way that you can find out is by trying it. That's it. That's the existential element of it. The proof is to be derived by the incarnation of the attitude in your own life. No one can tell you how it will work for you. It's the thing that your destiny is to discover that. And you have to make, you have to make the decisions to begin with. It's like, because you can't do this without commitment. You have to commit to it first. That's the act of faith that, that Kierkegaard was so insistent upon. You have to say, I'm going to act as if being is good. I'm going to act as if truth is the pathway to enlightenment. I'm going to act as if I should pursue the deepest meaning possible in my life. And there's, there's reasons to do none of those. They're real reasons. So it's really a decision. But you, you can't find out what the consequence of the decision is unless you make the decision. I think the same thing happens when you get married, by the way. So if you think you might leave, you're not married. And then you think, well, the marriage didn't succeed. It's like, well, maybe you were never married. Because the rule is, you don't get to leave. And there's a reason for that rule. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't situations where there should be exceptions made for that. That's not the point. The point is that there's some games you don't get to play unless you're all in. And the other thing that's so interesting about being alive is that you're all in. No matter what you do, you're all in. This is going to kill you. So I think you might as well play the most magnificent game you can while you're waiting. Because do you have anything better to do? Really? Why not pick the best thing possible that you can do? Why not do that? Maybe you could justify your wretched existence to yourself that way. I think you could. That's what it looks like. You know, people find such meaning in the responsibilities they adopt, it stops making them ask questions about what life is for. If you have a newborn child, for example, like unless you're really in a bad way, psychotically depressed, or, or maybe your personality really needs some retooling, you stop thinking about anything but ensuring that that baby is doing well. And if someone comes along and asks you an existential question about your commitment to that, the right response is, why are you asking me such stupid questions when, when, the, when this, this is manifesting itself right in front of your eyes? Like, how blind can you be? That isn't a time for, for questions about the meaning of life. The answer is right in front of you. And if you can't see it, it's not because life has no meaning, it's because you're blind. I mean, that's what the image of, of, of the Virgin Mother and the child is all about. It's like, what's the answer to the meaning of life? Here's an answer. It's like, well, I'm going to criticize that. Well, go right ahead. You know, it's like, it's like, what, what, you're, you're like a, you're like a, what do you call that? A termite gnawing on a temple. There's no, there's no utility in that sort of criticism. You're, it's blindness. And it's the same thing with regards to the path of the hero. It's like, it glistens in front of you and you can criticize it. It's like, fine. Put the cart before the horse and, and see how far you get. So I thought, to bring full closure to the class, I was trying to solve this terrible puzzle that confronted me for and many other people about how it was that human beings got themselves in such a tangle about what they believed. Such a tangle that we were pointing the ultimate weapons of destruction at one another, which, by the way, we are still doing. And I thought, okay, well, I understand that. We need our belief systems. They orient us. And that means there will be conflict between belief systems, and that can be a catastrophe. And that's being played out everywhere again in very many ways. What's the solution to that? Well, one possibility is there's no solution. It's just mayhem all the way around. Could be the case. But it seemed to me, as I delved into it, that the proper solution to that was to live properly as an individual, because you're more powerful than you think. 
way more powerful than you think. I mean, God only knows what you are in the final analysis. You're blind to your own weaknesses, but you're also blind to your own strengths. And so then I think, well, if you got your act together, it'd be better for you, and instantly it would be better for your family, assuming they wanted you to get your act together, and not everyone does, but... And then it would be better for the community. It's like, how far could you take that? If you stopped wasting time, and if you stopped lying, and if you oriented yourself to, to the highest possible good that you could conceive of, and you committed to that, how much good could you do? Well, I would say, why don't you find out? So that's what I think you should do. You should find out. You don't have anything better to do. And there's nothing in it, as far as I've been able to tell, there's nothing in it but good. So maybe you could sort yourself out so that you wanted nothing but the good. And, and then maybe you could help make that manifest in the world. And maybe we wouldn't have all these terrible problems then. At least we'd have fewer of them and that would be a start. So, it's, the, it's the, the answer to the problem of humanity is the, is, the, is the integrity of the individual.